I know that you did all these different projects, then Mean Girls comes along. Yes. And there was a lot of, well. Because there was a lot that happened before Mean Girls. You were ish, known. Ish, 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 ish. Definitely like Freaks and Geeks Wild. It was like a mind blowing experience just because it was also new. I didn't like feel connected to anything. It was just all overwhelming. Right. It wasn't fun. It was just like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. And I did a few episodes of it and every episode felt like that. And then sometimes I think like, that some actors only have that experience. Like they only have, oh, people were sort of nice and it was fine, but I didn't like bond with anybody and mm -hmm. I didn't become like homies with the makeup. Per like they don't have the full experience. Well, what I consider to be the full experience. And I think it would be a really bad job if you only got that version of it. Right. Because so much of it is like you build these really intense relationships with so many people throughout, you know, every job. Maybe you keep like one or two friends as you move on, but like, it is. Full. I couldn't. The main like, oh, I couldn't work in an office thing is I couldn't imagine not having that like full on. We are related to each other. We are in love with each other. And now I'll never see you again. There's I this, need that weird. <laughs> right. Shit. It's like it's like yeah. being in. I mean, I shouldn't say this, but it's akin in some way uh, to um, being in the trenches with some people like it feels it feels like we're in this. We got to make this work together. And then these bonds form. And it is silly because I realize I'm describing making television shows yeah. and making sketch comedy or in your case, you know, making movies and making TV shows. But it is similar when the greatest part of it is we're all in this together. We yeah. all, this show is in half an hour. We got to do this. We're scared, but we're also excited. And you go through that for a number of years. And when I see... Um, writers and people I've worked with over the years in the nineties and two thousands. And I just, I get emotional I know. because I think you were there with me. We went through some crazy stuff. Yeah. It and still feels that way. Totally. And it's like a lot of the fires that you're putting out, let's say right before going on and doing your show. Like it's something that you can't really fully explain to anybody else who isn't there, who mm -hmm. isn't like boots on the ground. Yep. And so it does, it bonds you. And then like the saying, the abrupt goodbye, it took me, I guess it's, that's the one difference is like you do these, you did the same show forever. You stuck around with these people. But for me, it was like you have these experiences and then you really do like depart this family. And I don't know a single actor, certainly not any that I'm friends with that don't have like severe abandonment issues. And like we just go and do this to ourselves all the time. Like <laughs> well, it, we, it's wild. You know, it's funny. We always choose the thing that we fear most. I as a kid and it's documented because I would talk about it and I actually wrote uh, the writer E.B. White a letter telling him I was wanted to do something and maybe be a writer, but that I was very afraid of criticism and he wrote me back. And this is in 1980. So what am I like 16 years old? And I know that my nightmare was what's the thing I care about the most being funny what would terrify me the terrify me the most to be up in front of people trying to be funny and have it not work i would rather be burned with acid than have that happen what did i choose to do yeah <laughs> yeah but isn't that impressive that you did that with your life like you faced the thing that scared you and yeah you always have to like put it in context like no it's not as impressive as like x y and z we're just entertainers we're yeah, pieces of exactly. shit don't worry don't worry we hate ourselves like we suck. but it is like you know we're well, like facing yeah. the thing that's scary so you said so you said and and do you think this is something that is true of you and other actors is abandonment issues yeah. For, I mean, that's been my experience for sure. Right. And then. Is it something you had your, uh, your yes. whole life? I yeah. mean, yes. I mean, I know I mean, my mom died and that's when it happened. And then. And you were quite young, I think. 13. Yeah. yeah. Damn. But then like you see all these. And I think it was especially painful at the beginning because when you're doing especially like young people, high school things, for example, when I did a bunch of those. There's this whole social element to it. I'm very happy to have graduated from this, to be honest, like aged out of it. Because it used to be like, okay, we're in Canada for two months and we're going to work together, but we're also going to be best friends and we have to go out every single night together. And if you don't go out, then you're left out. And it's like this whole social element yeah. to it, which is exhausting. And then you're convinced you're going to be best friends forever. 
and then you never are. Like you put those relationships, you like put them in the real world and they fizzle and die except for like maybe one or two. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with like romantic relationships. Like this is, this is true love. <laughs> you have to like learn that a few times. <laughs> I think that's a pretty universal thing. Like then as soon as you're like not living in a hotel room with like nothing, no responsibilities whatsoever. No distractions. <laughs> nothing, right. nothing. But the people I know who still hold on to that and there are very few now that we're grown ups and people have families and stuff, but like it's never going to be the same. You accept that it's never going to be the same. It was interesting with with Fleischman because Taffy, who wrote the book and the show, mm -hmm. it was her ex first experience doing a television show. And she's experiencing all of that for the first time, like on the last day of work, like how emotional that was last day of shooting. Like, but how, then what happens and how do we stay close? And how, how do, we do we keep this going? Yeah. Is, and, is often the refrain yeah. is this was an amazing experience. We all came together and we did this. Yep. And then um, the site that always made me sad is, you know, all the times that we traveled our show anywhere to be these, you know, week shows in San Francisco amazing set built that recreates the Golden Gate Bridge and I can come out and walk on it and, and enter the, you know, and we do a week of shows there and remotes and we're up all night and it's adventures. And the minute the show is over and you do the last one, they start tearing it all apart brutal. and throwing it into trucks and driving it back to New York City. And that happened, I saw that happen like 25 times with different shows that we traveled to different parts of the country. And I was bereft I was in shock, like, no, 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 that was, we just like touched the face of God, just had this amazing experience together and then it's just done. So yeah. I know what you're talking it's about. It's a horrible feeling, but you do get used to it. It's like a callous forms. And so for Taffy seeing it with her for the first time and I just had to be like, it's not going to continue. This is it. Like as bad as it feels now, it doesn't, it's not going to feel better. You're just going to maybe have another fun experience hopefully in the future, but like this is dead and <laughs> over. <laughs> like, there's nothing that I can say to you other than the truth, which is like, oh, it feels bad. But most of us have been doing this for so long, we're used to the feeling. And so well, and couldn't you lie not, to her just a little bit? No. no. <laughs> like, this is it. You've peaked. <laughs> Sorry. How is Taffy now? Is she OK? Yeah, but there's still I mean, we're still in it, you know, like especially with this rollout, like the old school week by week episodes coming out. It's still happening. Uh. But not for much longer, you know, for a few more weeks that I'll call her and be like, now it's really over. <laughs> so it's, it sucks. Like I do feel for her. And the, the premiere was in New York. And for many reasons, it was such a celebration. Uh, like it felt the first time it was like post, like truly post pandemic. Like it was a, in Carnegie Hall and a tavern on the green. And I hadn't been to a big premiere in mm -hmm. so long. And she kept saying like, it's like my bat mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> and it really was the happiest night of her life. And it was so fun. It was genuinely fun. And those premiere parties are never fun. Like they're always just kind of work. And I'm always in her ear like, they're never fun like this, you know. <laughs> it's probably never going to be fun like this again. The whole time on set. It's good set, to have you around. You're all <laughs> right. I like it. I know. What do you like on the holidays? Right? <laughs> this is probably our last Christmas <laughs> as a family. <laughs> the tree was a pagan symbol. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, but it is, Fleischman was one of those lucky things where like everybody in the cast was nice. Everybody came like very prepared. All these things that don't happen every time. Everybody bonded. It really felt like a family. And everybody says that. And it rarely actually feels like a family family. But this did to the point where Taffy gave a speech at the premiere. And she said she thanked her sons and her her husband, Claude, at the end and everybody, I mean, the thunderous applause for Claude, because everybody in that room knew like we took your wife away and you had to hold it down. And like the first time you do a show, I can't imagine anything crazier. And everybody knew Claude and everybody knew how he stepped up in the greatest way. And everybody, it, it felt like genuinely like the warmth in the room for this show. I have never experienced anything like that. And I think it is because of Taffy coming in all green and bright eyed and like, this is amazing. And it's nice to have somebody remind you like, oh, actually this is amazing. Yeah, it is uh, my experience. I saw it at SNL when I'd been there for a while and was really still blown away by it. 
But I'll never forget when Adam Sandler showed up for the first time as a kid. All he kept doing was coming by and going like, oh, this is the best. <laughs> this is the best. Oh, my God. Did you, you know, and again, that same kind of thing, like these snacks are free. <laughs> and I thought I've always been drawn to that energy. I love that energy because I think the biggest challenge, and I'm not just talking about show business. I mean, in any career, the biggest challenge is how do I stay young? And I don't mean how do I look young, but how do I just keep that sense of, wow, this is fun. Yeah. Which is, you know, you have to work at it. It's like stomach crunches or something. You just have to do it. You really keep bringing up them abs. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you've. <laughs> we get it. Let's see them. Wonderful abs. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, slurp, slurp. Slurp. Blurp. Blarp. Uh, <laughs> the sound blarp isn't heard much, but when I take my shirt off, you'll hear three blarps <laughs> as different chunks of abdominal fat settle <laughs> down by my ass. Oh, wow. Oh, come on. Oh, wow. Ladies out there, you getting hot? <laughs> How does your abdominal fat get to your ass? Yeah. It falls. Yeah. So it's back abdominal? It's like no, pendulum no, it's... swings back. Thank you. Oh. Betwixt fall... the legs. Ooh, thank you. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Thank I you. Know. Yeah, Lizzie saw me come out of the ocean and oh, she saw, saw it happen. So it's like you're like swing dancing with your body That's fat. That's a that... beautiful yes. way yes. to think yes. about it. Think it's like good. that you're German, good? that Berlin film swing dance, which is all about <laughs> people. <laughs> German. What an improbable <laughs> film. I think it takes place like during World War II and there are Nazis, but. Kids are, Germans are swing dancing. You're like, no, nah, no. Yeah. You're impressive swing dancers, but maybe oppose this regime. Oh, <laughs> swing kids. Swing kids. Oh. Yeah, I remember that movie. Oh, I yeah. remember oh, that. Actually, and then that's the reference about. I got. Yeah, and yeah. then in the end, uh, Hitler's driving by in a Mercedes Benz, and he hears the, the swing and the music, and he goes in, and he sees them all, and he decides to be a better person. Oh, oh that's nice. That's yeah. Good. Dance. God bless dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll save us all. It will.